A super special review of the Land Rover Discovery 5 is today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Not only exterior and interior, everything you need to know about the Land Rover Discovery in this new generation, we'll have on-road driving and a special off-road feature with real hardcore off-road trails here in Utah. Incredible landscape, you can already see it in the US here. And this will really be worth watching, I can promise you. Also, we are comparing it a little bit to the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport. What are the differences there on road and off road? And we'll show you everything you need to experience here with this vehicle. The question remains with this new look is it still hardcore off road? We'll find out together in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go! So tracks and obstacles change, you've already seen now some of the amazing footage we've got for you here. And the weather is changing quite a lot, you know, from sun to shade. And so the temperatures drop quite fired quite rapidly here in the desert. And the even better look now, of course, to the front of the vehicle. In the shade you can see it even better than, not so hard light. The Discovery 5 has this big badge right here. It is more round than the previous generation. Is it also a small or cheaper Range Rover? We'll find out in this review too. The headlights start with halogen, optional. They can be equipped with full LED headlights or then also come with the higher trim levels. By the way, the waiting depth has been increased in this generation, about 90 centimeters of waiting depth now, so you can go real steep water ponds with it. Again, look at this landscape, one of the most amazing ones I have ever seen, for sure. And you might ask yourself, why is this vehicle somehow beaten up? Yeah, it is somehow beaten up already and not by us. The thing is that you can also book the tour yourself. It's a Land Rover experience tour, so that's also possible for Land Rover customers if you want to experience that one. And well, then you also get some scratches, you know, when you uh, have this vehicle out for a couple of weeks on real hardcore off-road tracks. So the length of this vehicle is 4 meters 97 or 16 foot 3. And this is approximately the, the same length also for the Range Rover or the Range Rover Sport because they're all on the very same platform. Weight savings in the new generation because of the all aluminum architecture. Then rims 19 to 22 inch, those ones here the 21 inch, again they are a little bit damaged already, we'll soon also show you some properly uh, ones that are still um, you know very very well in shape. What else is important? Well there has been the discussion, the Discovery now looks a little bit smoother, rounder, less off-road-ish, you see that the classic gap we had here, this step up for, for the rear window it is basically gone now, but the ground clearance was even increased by some centimeters now at 28.3 centimeters maximum. If you have the air suspension and pump the car up, you've already seen it probably on the off-road shots at the moment. This one here is a you know rather normal level you can see here. So at the first side, I was also thinking about especially the rear area. Um, no, I wasn't quite sure about that, but when you experience the vehicle in you know, life situations, I think it also grows on you. So meanwhile, I also um, actually quite like the design. But we'll see if it also continues at the very rear. Let's see. And here we go with this asymmetric lineup. And yeah, I have to say, that's not exactly my favorite. There I more, you know, prefer to the Range Rover Sport or the Range Rover style, which are a little bit more distinctive, more, you know, have a little bit more edges. 
Here we can, let's say, a little friendlier setup. What I really love is that we get the, you know, some of the sand here on the, uh, you know, on the rear, even on the each of the single buttons here. Look how loose it is. It's really great, right? <laughs> That's awesome. And I think a proper off-road review also needs a car that is dirty and somehow beaten up. If you want to see the, you know, rather road. Uh, focus review check the one aj did earlier also with a clean car we will link that of course for you that review but we also have on road part today so we'll cover all of the aspects you need to know this one by the way the si6 hse si6 is the big petrol engine hse is the higher trim level we're going to talk more about that when the engine part begins and also when we have the interior and now also to two clean cars that you can see how they look when they're not filled with dust in Namib orange and also in this metallic gray. What do you like best? And we also have clean and non-damaged alloys for you here in 20 inch. Let's get inside. Here's a nice contrast at the door handles and an interesting door closing sound. Mm, I've heard better, <laughs> I must admit. Then this one here is a bright interior and you can also pick matte wood decor elements. I really like those, those and they don't collect fingerprints for example. And you can see how the building processing is, the build quality, everything basically looks like the fall in the big Range Rover. Also I really like the bright style for example also with the steering wheel again it looks like a Range Rover steering wheel you know, with the bright on the interior. Then um, the seats actually in European markets for the um, S and SE trim you can also get fabric seats as a base. I would strongly recommend those. In the US market unfortunately only animal skin and it's you know not the best uh, quality overall uh, high class leather red will be better here or also um, you know microfiber fabric alternatives but that's how it is and uh, they've changing it with the Range Rover La as I said earlier then let's get inside and you have this high command seating position um, as you would expect from a full size SUV nice also that for example the dashboard here is covered in a, um, let's say well it's a soft it's not exactly fabric it's not leather red it's something in between but very interesting for sure um, there's also a small head-up display available but it's not really that good this uh, one color design and not so well to be seen i would just go with the normal instruments headroom wise well we have the panoramic roof here i'm one meters 86 or six foot one that leaves some room over my head uh, of course, more when you leave the panoramic roof out. Electric seat control, um, electric lumbar support, front and rear. will get even more interesting when we come to the rear, about the rear seats. But this is, wow, really such a comfortable seating position. And as all the windows are upright, you also have a very good overview to all of the sides. Cockpit overview in my favorite style, bright here, matte wood, wow. Soft materials at the top, really feels great. And, you know, this is half the price of a Range Rover. And if you don't need the Range Rover badge, again, I can say, you know, what else you, you need for that. Really well done. Great step forward in this new generation here with, with this matte aluminum style. And overall, pretty clean setup. The big temperature controls. This one here is also well integrated. Horizontal layout. So I think this is a big step forward. So in the interior, even more has been done. And there it is, a head-up display. It's hard to see on camera. It's not flickering in real life, but it does on camera. So it kind of disappears, but it's not really, as I said, in real life. And yeah, pretty small. 
just uh, one color and um, it's not a must have. Then the instruments, right side RPM, left side speed and a small digital screen also for consumption and stuff. Infotainment system, 10.2 inch, the optional one, the biggest one that is available. You can see it right here, you can scroll like this and um, have the home button right there with this app view. The cameras is a very interesting system. You have this surround view available, but also can switch to other perspectives when driving off-road, for example, to the front or to the sides. The problem is just when we have a lot of dust, the cameras will be covered in dust and then we cannot see anything anymore. Your phone can be connected via Bluetooth, but also with a cable when you have this in-control apps Unfortunately, no Apple CarPlay and other uh, devices available yet to connect for that one. And you also have a 4x4 view, for example, with off-road information. Then you can see you know, how the wheels are being turned or if the differentials are in place. Very nice to control the temperature here behind those glass. And when you push it, then you can also activate here the seat heating, for example. So nice system cleverly done and the other things that you can control where the stuff is coming from you have to press here and then you go up to the screen again and control it so this is basically a hotkey the same that you can also access here for example for the um, for the seat heating you can also do it right here and then you can see the visualization there as well storage space here in the front and to a fault power supply then you can put this one open with adaptive beverage holders Hmm. See, you can even flip them aside, have more space, another, oh, this one, 5 volt indeed here. So, interesting storage solutions here. Then you have this drive selector, pretty easy solution, go into D mode or N or whatever, S mode for sporty driving. This is then the, um, uh, you know, the off-road control, terrain response too. You can pick those modes for snow and, you know, mud, but you can also just leave it in auto and the vehicle automatically does it. And when we go off-road riding here, we can also use the um, low gear. So this is the off-road gear reduction. This one helps us when we drive off-road to get more control. And here you can also boost up the air suspension. You can put it higher for off-road driving or lower again for street driving. And here the middle armrest, pretty thick. Um, you have basically, oh, that's also interesting here with the tablet for the rear passengers. Um, then they have a split right there. Um, and even below that, there is a cooler, for example, here for water bottles. And you can also activate and deactivate it with this one here. Then you have two USB slots right there. Um, sometimes it happened to me because you have those two buttons here as well. Then you can open either, you know, this one here or open this one. You have to learn that a little bit that sometimes you don't li do like this and then that this side and then the mobile phones get uh, all over the place. But I mean, when you learn it once, then you're also fine. And here, interesting, there are two glove box, one button right there. You can put some things there and then the normal glove box below that. So we do have rubber floor mats here today, as you've maybe seen, and that's excess the rear you can also hold on tight here with the panic handle and while well, you sit upright um, knee room does exactly fit for me maybe i could still move a little bit forward as a tall driver that would be possible you can put stuff in here and here so it's actually both possible to put stuff in here there's a rear seat infotainment system optionally available in here um, and you can have also a fold right there and headroom wise well this is also blocked again a little bit by the panoramic roof um, there's a second panoramic roof behind me so it's a lot of light in this interior especially when we have the very bright setup right there and option you can also get the four zone ac control usb ports right here and then you still see a ac control um, it's off at the moment because the engine is not running and of course even more important and interesting is that we can even electronically adjust the backrest here you can you know sit a little bit more upright or a little bit more back um, and there's this clever folding flex system optionally for about 1500 euros 
we will access that via the trunk because it's really interesting. This one here is also the seven seater. You can get both five seater and seven seater. So you're really flexible here. I must say, I would have expected a little bit more leg room in the second row, but you know, it works for adults, of course, but a little bit more from the package would have been great. You can slide the seats forward here. That's just a manual control. So with, you know, here in the lower part. And um, when you get to this one here, this is also interesting, you can slide this one forward, but then electronically at the upper part, you can flip it and you see that the driver's seat or you know, the co-driver seat automatically goes forward a little bit. And you also need that one here to, this one can be slided forward, and but you could see excess the rear seats. Hmm, this is not that easy. And the good thing is, wow, Isofix, even at the rear seats, that's clever that you can put child seats in here. And you also have the Isofix here on the front seats. So overall, you can actually mount four child seats with Isofix. That's great. Um, well, but climbing in the rear is not really working that well for adults. And um, I mean, I can go around and try it from this side, but again, it's not that easy. So it would more be something, you know, different for children. Well, here it does work somehow. Whoa! And when I try to get inside, well, I can sit here. Um, the bench would have been, you know, would need to be a little bit more forward. Headroom-wise, it's actually quite okay. We can also flip the head restraints up right there. And then we are actually quite okay. It does exactly fit. So it's still a versatile car. But considering the length of 5 meters, I would have wished a little bit more legroom, I think. In general, also the rear seats here are very comfortable. I think the most important thing is that you do have the Isofix anchor points right there. Because most of the time, in the most 7 seaters we see, those ones are missing. And then to the trunk, remember, open it under the V. <laughs> then you do know it. Electric tailgate, optional or also in the US market, there's just the electric tailgate. Then this one here, the you know, folding inner tailgate, you can fold out electrically. I haven't seen an option where it still would be available manually. I think just a manual one would be handier. This electric that you always have to press the button, to me, that's not really a practical solution. 300 kilograms maximum weight on it. I'm not sure if I would try 300 kilograms though. Then, just a small trunk here. Then you can, from here with this easy fold flex system, you can flip those seats electrically. The seats before automatically go in a position that they can be flipped. That is a really great solution. Then this setup would be 1,200 liters. And you can also flip the next seats from here, like this. It takes ages, but again, it's an easy solution. And the seats before that would also be moving forward that it does exactly fit. And that is missing with some manual solutions, for example. So, wow. And then, <laughs> that didn't work out that well. Yeah. So the last time I tested it, the front seat before actually did move forward by itself. I'm not sure why I didn't do it yet in this time. So I'm doing it manually now. And then we also can get the maximum liters of 2,500 capacity. And wow, that's really a lot. You can do so much with this vehicle. And what is also available here, the rubber floor mat to protect your stuff or that you can just wipe it clean. And this would then be here the uh, rear cover well it is somewhat a problem then here with the uh with the rear belts um so you need actually some more hands for it of course if you wonder why i use this hand microphone it's to block out the background noise from the river <laughs> here that's how it is a little bit wobbly solution that one isn't it and one comparison view to a dark interior so if you're not fencing the bright one this is how it looks like then with black seats and also when all of the rest interior or decor elements are in a dark style.
So the two most relevant engines that are also available mainly in the US. This one here, the SI6 supercharged 3 liter V6, 340 horsepower. And there's also a 3 liter V6 diesel with 258 horsepower. However, on other markets, Germany, for example, you also get smaller engines. There's a small petrol engine, 2 liter, 4 cylinder, 300 horsepower. It's the SI4. And there's also a smaller diesel, the TD4 or the SD4, both 2 liter 4 cylinders and with 180 or 240 horsepower. So far, it has been only the Range Rover or the Range Rover Sport, which had this V8 supercharged 5 liter with 525 horsepower. Now there's also the new discovery, the SVX. And that one also gets then the V8. But usually this one or the 3 liter V6 diesel would be, you know, the um, you know most adequate engines for this discovery here for the big SUV. As, you know, when you go for the downsizing engines, it does not necessarily mean that you would have a lower consumption. And uh, it's still a heavy vehicle, even if it has lost uh, massively on weight. So I think those two engines would be actually, you know, at the moment, way to go. Uh, the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport, what is the difference there engine-wise? Well, they do also have the plug-in hybrid now, for example. So this is the road driving test with the Discovery 5 because of course always useful not to get only the off-road experience. Most people will still use it on road. So we're driving the SI6 which is also the most important engine for our friends over in the US where we're also today in Utah. And this 3 liter 6 cylinder gets you 340 horsepower supercharged and it is somewhat different of course to the diesel i soon get more into the specifics there and of course you have different driving modes we'll just start normal cruising and the main thing you do realize here you get a standard package basically without the air suspension the air suspension is then optional or included in higher trims and the air suspension here is really set for road driving in a way that you get a very soft driving feeling. Like this riding a carpet, evening out all of the smaller and bigger bumps. We're riding alongside Colorado River, by the way. Very beautiful scenery, so I hope you also enjoy the look out of the window while I'm talking to you. So, um, when you're driving straight, this soft setup of the air suspension is, of course, superb. Also, when you compare our off-road driving parts, it really helps your off-road. Recently, we had the only Porsche Cayenne in the review, which rather has this stiff air suspension, which is great for fast road driving, but then rather uncomfortable for off-road driving. So again, it's just the matter of what you want. It's not about good or bad, it's really what's suitable for you. So when we start with the steering here, um, well, Land Rover is not exactly known to put the most precise steering in the vehicles and they are also oriented for the off-road driving experience. So an off-road is helpful when the steering is not reacting too harsh, you know, so it's not too progressive. Then again, on the road, it makes it, especially in this you know, lower angle situations like here, it's rather a little bit, you know, dead, you know, so it doesn't have a biggest effect. So um, this is, you know, one negative side of, of, you know, of the steering, which is not that feeling so natural. Then again, I really prefer the soft layout of the air suspension we also have here, because, you know, as for me, when I'm going for a big SUV with air suspension, I do expect this flying carpet feeling. Um, if I want a sportier car, I would probably go for a smaller SUV for example or the normal sedan or or sports tour or something like that 
but in this big SUV I do expect this flying air suspension feeling. What about you? I would like to hear your comments about that. So I also like how they set it up. You know, um, AJ had a little bit different opinion when he tested the Discovery Fight first. He preferred a little bit stiffer suspension, but that shows you how it differs. Also, you know, I promised you to get some something in the details about the differences Range Rover, Range Rover Sport and Discovery 5 and sometimes you can feel even better when driving on road because technically speaking all three vehicles are you know have something in common of course basic building style and the architecture the all-wheel drive but especially when you're driving it on the road you feel that the Range Rover would be the softest the Discovery is somewhat in between you can somehow compare those two better, I think. And the Range Rover Sport definitely has this rather sporty approach, which then goes again in the direction of the Porsche Cayenne. So that's again that you can actually get the vehicle that suits your riding style best. Indeed, what they've done with the Discovery 5 here, oh, we have to slow down a little bit. Some road works going on. So indeed, what, they, what they've done here with the Discovery 5, if I would close my eyes now and um, you know, someone would ask me, are you driving the Range Rover or are you driving the Discovery 5? It's really hard to distinguish anymore. So, um, you know, in the past generations, it was a little bit easier, but now, as I've worked so much on this all-new vehicle here, and they share the same architecture and also the same uh, weight savings and so on, and... Um, some, you can also get it with the same engines, you know, the Range Rover, Range Rover Sports also have the more powerful engines. For example, also the, uh, the eight-cylinder diesel. But then again, they, are, they have become a little bit more similar. And so also driving-wise, I have to confirm that this one is actually, you know, the, the better price performance deal um, if you leave the batch aside. Of course, there will still be people who say, I want that Range Rover and I want the Range Rover batch. And I'm also willing to pay 40,000 euros extra for it. Uh, but then again, if you think about you want the best price performance deal and you want the you know, softest driving, most comfortable Land Rover there is, but don't pay too much money for it, then you can also just easily go for the Discovery because it will get you basically the same soft driving feeling. Um, they've also massively worked on the sound insulation. So, for example, when we're standing still, we basically hear nothing. It's also uh, one advantage of the petrol engine. It is more silent than the diesel engine. The diesel engine has somewhat this, you know, still diesel nailing, how you call it, that you do hear that. Um, however, again, here also it has become harder to really differentiate which engine you are driving. Um, when we soon go to, to the sport mode, I can show you a little bit more of the acceleration. They do feel more different than from, from the diesel to the petrol engine when we hopefully can get going again. There's some with a stop sign standing there. So close to one, one way there. I'll get back to you soon again. So we are back again here for you and I actually have zeroed out the, uh, the mileage. So today is an MPG, so it's about 31 MPG. Um, like the minimum consumption. Of course, when you tackle it a little, little bit, it will go up. Well, the MPG will not go up. The consumption will go up. The MPG will go down then. So and if you want to know how is it in liters per 100 kilometers, just use Google and then you can type in 30 MPG in km slash 100. Uh, sorry, liters 100. <laughs> Again, liters per 100 kilometers. That will work fine. So, and then we also have the sport mode, we can activate it at the drive selector and what's happening then is the car shifts up later and shifts down earlier. So you're always at higher RPM. So this is helpful, for example, if you want to overtake on the motorway, um, situations like those, um, if you just want a little bit more power, this vehicle has plenty of power. However, if you still need some more, that would be a way. And you see that the throttle input is more direct then. So when I really push it then, it comes a little bit faster. 
you still feel the weight of the vehicle somehow, of course. I mean, it's although the weight savings from generation four to generation five is still about two tons, and so the vehicle nets needs to get going somehow. And um, what you can always do, even though when you're in the normal D mode again, um, just stay in the normal mode, but then use the shifting pedals and just shift down like one or two gears and then you're also ready for the next overtaking maneuver. That's also pretty helpful that you don't need to wait for the kick down, then the acceleration sets in. And this is, you know, also something what you feel in the difference from the diesel to the petrol engine when you really floor it down, also the, the sound that is, that is going there. So actually, you know, from the mileage figure, it's, I mean, it's, it's still a big vehicle. It has to be moved somehow. We um, also got three people here today in the car and some luggage, but we are also, we're not all too heavy, so that shouldn't have the biggest effect on that one. So one of those very rare traffic lights here in this area. So um, usually that you just can keep driving. It's great landscape, but sometimes you do have to wait. And then it can take some time as too. By the way, um, my favorite feature for winter time, so when it's still quite cold here in the morning, is the heated steering wheel. You can just activate it at the steering wheel directly. You also get warm fingers. Here again, you see I have to steer a lot actually just to do a 90 degree corner. Then again, when we're going off road driving, I'm quite happy um, that the, the steering wheel is not that direct because when the rock would maybe change something of the steering wheel, I would not go like this, but a little bit smoother on me then. So let's get back to the acceleration then again. So when I'm, for example, here at 45 miles per hour, it's very nice that I also get the speed limit directly in the small digital instrument. You can see, okay, 45 is the speed limit. Let's see the RPMs go up. And overall, it's still a smooth acceleration. You don't get a super boost because the all-way drive also distributes pretty even. So this one is still one of the classic all-way drives. It's not one of those model all-way drives where you would, you know, just have one exit predominantly and then we are clutch to get all to the other. This one here is still here, a permanent all-way drive. You always have that. That also makes up for this very even distribution. And this one is also having the off-road gear reduction. You can get optional. When you drive it on the road, it doesn't play any role. This will just help us in very severe off-road situations. Also, the driving mode selectors, you just leave it on the road driving and then you're absolutely just fine. Um, something more to the sound insulation. So at the moment, we're driving about 55, 57 miles per hour, something like that. And I don't have to raise my voice that much. You have to bear in mind that this vehicle is you know, pretty much like, like a cupboard. You just drive on the road and against the wind. So you have to insulate a lot that is still keeping silent. And this is also one of the major differences if you compare it to the Discovery 4, that this one was definitely improved. And also from the overview, you know, to the sides, to the rear, all the windows are upright. So even though we have a big car, we have a good overview all around you. Several off-road parts in this review for you with the Discovery 5 starting here with the rocks and this is one thing where the soft air suspension and also the rather soft and loose steering wheel really has an advantage. So this one's here, to me one of the best comfortable off-road vehicles because it is super capable with the all-wheel drive. We got the um, terrain response and auto mode, so the vehicle handles itself, you know, with the distribution. Um, we don't have the differential lock in the rear in place, we just have the center differential lock in place that we have even distribution from front and rear from the all-wheel drive. And we have the off-road gear reduction in place, just with, you know, we standing still, put it to neutral, put the low button and then that's it. Then you go to D again 
And this off-road gear reduction helps you to get the power on the ground a little bit smoother, but in, you know, in case you need it, even more powerful with reduced um, speed overall. So it's nothing to go fast with, of course. And also in this uh, special off-road gear reduction mode, that vehicle is automatically lifting up the air suspension so we have more ground clearance for this harsh rock part. And at the moment we have a Range Rover in front of us, which is also very nice to see another vehicle when we look in front of the camera. And you see there are also some instructors running around. And this is just, you know, a safety precaution also to protect the vehicles, for example, that nothing gets damaged so easily. Now we're slowly moving up and the instructors will just take a look so we don't damage the wheels for example and that nothing gets scratched in the lower ground because this is, you know, sometimes when we go to those off-road parkours um, people say, ah, you know, that's not harsh off-road and well, this one here definitely is now. Um, you can feel it also like the angles, the g-forces are applied to you and when you look to the front, you know, sometimes you think, is that even possible to go with a vehicle uh, on this trail? And yeah, it is actually possible when you have the air suspension pumped it up with more ground clearance. Um, this is also where the Range Rover Sport has a slight disadvantage because it has sportier spoilers. Um, so you have to watch out for that. This is better than with Discovery. Wow, and the thing is, those are really, really hard rocks here. And due to the soft setup of the air suspension, it's not that uncomfortable. Um, so when I, for example, remember riding some trails, not like hard like this, but also some gravel stuff with the Discovery Sport uh, two years ago, is a massive difference, really. When you don't have the air suspension and going off-road, you feel every bump in your lower back and, you know, Maybe some want to have that, but I actually don't. So um, comfort-wise, it's really great to have the air suspension. And again, of course, for the ground clearance. So you can see here, I also have my hands on the steering wheel, thumbs not in the steering wheel. It wouldn't get dislocated as soon as the steering wheel would be shaken around somewhere. You have to pay attention to that. and. The most important thing about driving off-road is steady and slow. So not necessarily coming to a total halt, but then always steady, slow. Instructors also <laughs> advising that. Because then you can really tackle those obstacles slowly. Don't damage something of the vehicle and also for your co-driver. It's also important. It's not too uncomfortable than for. Actually, it's very comfortable. Yeah, so Michelle proves it. It's very comfortable, even as a co-driver, is really excited. And I mean, look at that. It's like no way you would think that the vehicle would ever be able to get up there. It's um, almost like uh, like climbing upstairs here, but those ones here are really natural stairs. So, I mean, at some point water must have been flowing right here. Wow, <laughs> those steps you're going in there you could, uh, well, it's like 40, 50 centimeters high. Wow, amazing. So, um, yeah, the Discovery 5 looks less off-roadish. It looks rounder. Um, and, you know, it was said it's maybe not that hardcore anymore. But, I mean, if you look at that, what's capable of here? I can tell you it's definitely still hardcore.
And now, as promised, let's talk a little bit about the differences between the Land Rover Discovery, the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport. Because in those days here, we were in Utah, we could drive all three models on-road and off-road and compare them a little bit. So they all three sit on the very same platform and thus they are somewhat similar. To give you a short overview as for the length, they all come pretty close. The Discovery is 4 meters 97, Range Rover 4 meters 99, so almost the same. The Range Rover Sport with 4 meters 85, a little shorter. For the foot figures, Discovery 16 foot 3, Range Rover 16 foot 4, Range Rover Sport 15 foot 9. So they all are quite similar in length and size. Price does differ a lot. The Discovery just 52,000, the Range Rover 100,000, so double the price. And the Range Sport closer to the Discovery 64,000 German reference prices. But they are quite similar also in the US. So when you talk about driving them on road, although we have, you know, of course, a lot more off-road footage we gathered you here today, so just also enjoy the off-road pictures while I dry, uh, talk about the on-road driving. So on-road, you can really say the Range Rover Sport is the stiffest one, has the most agile driving feeling, as also the name says, when you really enjoy driving an SUV but still want a somewhat sporty ride. Then the Discovery is a little bit softer definitely, you more have this riding flying carpet feeling for that if you more appreciate that with a full size SUV. And the Range Rover is even a little bit softer. However, Discovery and the Range Rover do come very close also on road. And the same is basically also off road then. So the Discovery and the Range Rover are somewhat similar. Both are really great off-road vehicles because they are still so soft and comfortable even if you have such a rough terrain and going down steps and so on. The Discovery is the most off-road capable ones because all the spoilers, especially like front and side, they are not that wide to the ground so they are the smallest basically and so it has the biggest ground clearance. And when we compared some obstacles looking from the outside, which we've driven in the group also, we also saw that the Discovery also always had the most ground clearance, for example, when there was like maybe like three, thinger, three fingers thick left of space to the ground, really close calls. With the Discovery, for example, we had like two fingers with the Range Rover and one finger thick with the Range Rover Sport. So that was really a difference then. And so also the Range Rover Sport is, I mean, still a very off-road capable car if you have the air suspension and, and pump it up. But then again, it was the stiffest off-road also, so the less comfortable one. And you also had, let's say, the biggest problems when it got really, really close. But I think it's very interesting to have that in the lineup, because then you can really pick the vehicle that suits you best. And um, MPG figures is also interesting, you know, the SI6, the 3-liter V6 engine we driven in the Discovery had a 30 mpg as a minimum consumption so let's say the lowest consumption when you just go highway and cruise control that's about eight liters on 100 kilometers fairly good for such a big vehicle and also for such weight and when we compared because the, the range rover and the range Rover sport had the v8 the five liter v8 supercharged 525 horsepower that one the lowest consumption vehicle score was 23 mpg that would be about 10 liters those figures again are really the minimum figures when you drive them uh, you know city and, and stuff it will definitely go up so a realistic figure is then more for example about 13 liters for the range rover and about 11 liters for the discovery also with um, stop and go and so on just that you get you know some overview on that yeah, I mean, and overall, the Discovery is surely the best price performance deal, considering you know the price and what you get from it. And on the interior, well, you find some differences where the Range Rover would be a little bit more worthy, but then again, it doesn't explain double the price. And optionally, you can basically get almost everything for the Discovery nowadays. So my tip, actually, for the best price performance deal would be a Discovery and keep it low spec. Just pick some options. 
and then keep it also at a relatively low price. And the Range Rover Sport for those, you can do basically the same. And for those who appreciate more the sporty ride on the street, especially and where off-road doesn't play such a big role. And the well, the Range Rover, of course, if money does not play any role at all. Wow, what a review here for you and of course also for us. So shout out also to our cameraman Michelle for bringing us those awesome shots here today. Great job. <laughs> and now to our conclusion for the vehicle. Well, the Discovery 5. So at first sight, I wasn't exactly sure about the design, but as you can see it here also now in the beautiful scenery, it has this, you know, more than tech look, even though it has a lot of round shapes. So it really grew on me as for the design. Then the question was, is it still hardcore off-road? And yes, it definitely is. is and uh, it was one of the most capable off-road vehicles I have experienced so far due to the very well thought out air suspension, a soft air suspension, which really plays out very well in off-road driving. You can use the hill descent control if you like. You can also deactivate it, do it on your own. You can use the terrain response that the vehicle automatically adjusts the off-road mode, but you can also choose it for yourself. So you have a lot of flexibility you can go for the off-road gear reduction then so and there was hardly any obstacles when we pumped it all up with the air suspension that could not be tackled we uh, managed the wipe out hill we went to hell's revenge so a lot of interesting and famous hills we went up there and the discovery 5 really managed it all the interior is basically quite well processed so we've seen a lot of nice elements there Still, especially for the US market, an animal skin alternative is lacking. Land Rover has to do something there. They've already begun to change that with the new Range Rover Vela. And uh, you know also there's some famous quote from Gary McGovern, the Land Rover design director, that he's going to change this issue majorly. Well, the room that is offered is also among the best one from the whole brand. It's the most flexible vehicle too. And another question was, well, is it basically a cheaper Range Rover, considering you can get this one here for about 52,000 euros in Germany, for example, and the Range Rover is about 100,000. The Range Rover Sport is about 12,000 euros more than this one here. The Range Sport definitely has, you know, this sportier touch. This is the difference. Here you more have this you know, family touch, softer ride, uh, more outdoor focused. The Range Rover, however, of course has this the luxury touch, but when you've seen what they've done with the interior here and with the whole vehicle setup, you could really say that this one here is a Range Rover if you don't want to spend double the money. And it does have, doesn't have the Range Rover badge, but it has most other stuff the Range Rover has indeed. And last but not least, on-road riding. As I said earlier, you got this very soft air riding suspension that's too soft for you, and the Range Rover Sport is the right vehicle for you. If you want that softness, then it's exactly the right one. I hope we could shed some light on the questions we had before, and I would like to know your feedback for this vehicle, and also the off-road riding shots and the beautiful landscape we've seen here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time at Autogefühl.